Jean-Jacques Foucher's Satan sits ensconced between big, leathery wings. From the front, he's a coiled tangle of muscles. His limbs bend and flex, his shoulders swell and hunch. Right leg crossed over left, he extends a sharp-nailed foot to grip the edge of his pedestal. His clenched claw marks a clear spatial boundary between the viewer and his body, and we begin to see just how isolated he is, stranded there on his small rocky plinth. In fact, if we move to either side, he threatens to disappear completely. Instead, we'll see only the long, arcing surfaces of his wings. The wings' textures are carefully rendered, with wavy, skin-like membranes stretched over finely articulated bones, joints, and talons. A ridge of spines runs along the figure's head and neck, and a mane of fur cascades down his back. This is not the Satan we might have expected. Many popular depictions of Satan portray him as an all-powerful figure with sinister abilities of persuasion. Instead, Foucher's Satan looks startlingly human. He gives the appearance of a brooding romantic artist rather than a supernatural force of evil. His face is sharp-featured and expressive, with severe cheekbones and tensed brows. With his broken sword, he sulks in a state of unsettled melancholy. Satan was a popular subject among artists in the 1830s, but Foucher's version became especially influential. Many writers have observed the resemblance between Foucher's Satan and Rodin's Thinker, conceived nearly 50 years later. Today, Foucher's sculpture remains an affecting depiction of impotence and dashed ambition.